This video is entitled Adding Audio and Video to Your HTML Page and is a companion to the book So You Want to Learn to Use HTML and CSS, Chapter 2. I'm James M. Renault, PhD, and I'll be taking you through this presentation. In this video, I will be discussing common audio and video formats, how to transcode audio and video from one format to another, and how to add the audio tag and video tag to your web page. Let's start by discussing a few standard audio formats. Um, audio can come in various formats, like images can come in various file formats. And the three common file formats that you will see, the most common being the first and the third, are the MP3 file. The MP3 file is a standard called the MPEG Layer 3 Audio, and it's a very common compressed audio file format. The second format is the AUG format, or the AUG Vorbis in its full name, and it's an open source audio, present, audio compression software used by lots of open source operating systems. The WAV file, or WAV file, is a Windows audio file, and it's an uncompressed audio which means that a WAV file can end up getting huge. Um, those are the three most common types of audio files, but there are others, including uh, uh, WMAs and others. Um, there are programs called transcoding software that will take a file, one file and convert it and save it out as another. These can be processor intensive and take a significant amount of time to transcode an audio file. And uh, if you're, for instance, converting an MP3 to something else, remember the MP3 is a compressed file format, and the file that's created from it won't be exactly the same. It will be some sort, some little bit of loss. Um, and three transcoding, a couple of transcoding programs that I've used are Audacity, which is a great simple audio recorder transcoding program and media coder. And you can Google both of those and find those on the web. Now with video files, there are dozens and dozens of formats for various types of videos and, and, and video files. But the uh, three that we will see um, most often for video files are MP4 files. AVI files and FLV files. Um, MP4 files are the MP4 uh, stands for Motion Picture Expert Group Version 4, and it's an extremely widely supported uh, video format. The AVI file is an old Microsoft format that is still very widely supported in web browsers. The FLV video is the Flash plugin video. The problem with the FLV videos are that it requires having the Flash plugin in your web browser. And as of today, the Flash plugin is, is nearing the end of its life. So um, I would use FLVs. So if you've got a video in one format and you need to change it to another, just like with audio, we can use a transcoding software. And, and the two transcoding programs that I have used are Handbrake and FFmpeg. And you can go um, search for those on the web. They're free and open source, and you, they will transfer a video from one format to another or from one very high resolution with a giant uh, uh, file size down to a lower resolution or a smaller dimension with a smaller file size that would download better for the web. There are two formats for the audio tag and two formats for the video tag. And I'm going to start with the first audio tag format because it's the easiest. And the audio tag format is just like an image, sort of, except it's not a void tag. It has an open and close. And you say audio source src equals, and you give it the file name on your server or, or on a remote server. And then between the audio tag and the close audio tag, you put in a message so that if a user can't listen to the audio 
or can't see the audio for some reason or is is uh, has an impairment and and can't listen to the audio they could read the message or have the message read to them about what the audio said or what the audio contained so like the image it has an src tag but it doesn't have an alt tag you put the alternate text of the audio between the audio open and audio close tag so that's the simple audio tag the more complex audio tag uses a source tag inside the audio and close audio and you can see the difference here because we have two different files. We have a file called file.mp3 and a file called file.og. So I have the file in two different formats on the web server. And what happens when the browser sees this is it will download the one that it believes is best. It will download the one that it can play. So if it could play one but not the other, it would find the one it could play. So this makes it a lot better for generic, a lot better for general people, a lot better for, for being accessible from everywhere. Again, you put the message, if it's unavailable, you put the unavailable message between the audio tags but not in one of the sources. You can also put an autoplay or controls attribute on the audio tag and you can do that on the simple audio tag also that will either start the sound playing as soon as the page loads which in my opinion is really annoying don't do it unless it's you know really important um, and the controls tag will show the little audio clip and then give them a play a pause buttons underneath it so that so that they can can manipulate the uh the audio and play it and listen to it, rewind it, restart it. Um, so that's the complex or the the play the best audio of of a multiple list. And you can have three or four even listed of the different types. To include a video, we use the video tag. Like when we're including audio, we use the audio tag. The video tag in its simple format looks just like the audio tag, except we just say video, source equal name, the message if unavailable, close video, uh, works just exactly the same. The more complex video tag, or the better one of the two, um, is a little bit more sophisticated than the audio tag because when we are doing a video, we need to define its width and height. We need to tell the web browser how wide we want that window for the video to be. Um, so be sure you include the attributes width and height when you create a video tag of this format. You have multiple sources. You then have a description or a message if it's unavailable. Now, here in this example, it just says unavailable. It should give a better description than that of, of what the video was if a person would want to go look it up. Um, you can also add the autoplay or the controls attributes to the video tag. So here I have a page with um, a video tag on it. And it shows a picture of the Marines raising the flag on Iwo Jima in World War II in 1945. So you can see that I've downloaded the, the image as an MP4 and as an OG video, OGV. Um, you can see that it says your browser does not support the video element if your browser doesn't support the video element. Um, you can see the attribution of where I got the uh, video from the archives and uh, from the U.S. government uh, Office of War. Um, and uh, there's an example. You can see what the page looks like up above. And there's an example of what a video looks like. And the audio is very similar. I just didn't create a second example. This concludes video 2C. Um, and I'd like to uh, say thank you. This presentation is copyright 2020 by James Imbrino, Ph.D. All rights are reserved. You can contact me at jim at r-e-n-e-j-m dot com. Remember, this work is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial share alike, 4.0 international license. And I would say, like to say thank you for watching.